this is lecture 14 and this starts module 3. So we're going to be talking about discrete time Markov chains in this module. Um, in this particular lecture where I'm going to give a little bit of notation, remind you of random variables and how discrete time Markov chains um, relate to random variables and just give you overall terminology and notation of this lecture. Okay, so remember this idea of a random variable. So you have a random experiment um, and you have some kind of sample space that goes with this. So the random variable is this mapping which assigns the outcomes of a random experiment to the real numbers. So more formally, here your random variable x goes from your sample space s to the real numbers. And there's some probability um, associated with these random variables and with the events in the sample space. Okay, so for some terminology. Some of the terminology you're going to hear is what's called IID. And basically that means that random variables are independent and identically distributed. Which, for lack of better terminology, it means that if you have um, a random sample of let's say size n, then you can say that you have n IID variables if they're all independent, so each one of them are independent, and they all have the same distribution. Okay, so we are going to talk about stochastic processes. So um, sometimes um, this book is not called stochastic modeling, but introduction to stochastic processes. So a stochastic process is a family of random variables. So here, we denote this as xt of s, where t is in some index set, and s is your sample space. So typically, um, we think about t being time. So here you have, for any fixed t, then xt of s, so here t is fixed, then this just denotes a single random variable that's just defined on your sample space s. Instead, if we fix s now, then here s is fixed and we talk about xt where t is defined on our index set t. And so lots of times this corresponds to what's called a sample pass. So you can think about this as being one of those realizations from your very first assignment. When you were doing your first assignment on comparing the deterministic to the stochastic um, model to the SCE, the stochastic differential equation, you could have multiple um, realizations and so here you have xt of s is a function defined on your let's say time and you do this once you get one path or one stochastic realization for the process. And typically the s is suppressed so typically you understand that there is some um, set s, some sample space s, but normally we write just x of t um, where we normally think um, that we have time t in some set capital T. Okay, so now if this set capital T is um, is in the, the whole number 0, 1, 2, 3, then x is called a discrete time stochastic process. And so we're going to be talking about discrete time Markov chains in just a second, or actually probably in the next lecture. Um, so random variable is recorded at every time 0, 1, 2, 3. So you can think about since you've got the s suppressed, you're thinking about this is x of t, so this is x of 0, x of 1, x of 2, and you have a random number that's recorded at every time step. A continuous time stochastic process, so here we're going to talk about um, continuous time Markov chains as well in this course. So a continuous time stochastic process basically is when you have your t is some interval, so it could be, um, here it could be semi-infinite, it could be a finite interval, but in each of these cases we're allowing um, we're allowing x of t to be recorded at every instant in time. It doesn't mean it needs to change at every instant in time, but it's allowed to change at every instant in time in our index set t, where here t is no longer just the counting numbers, it's just 0, 1, 2, 3, but it's actually an interval. Okay, so now Markov chains. We talked about stochastic processes, and um, so a discrete time stochastic process is actually called a Markov chain, a discrete time Markov chain, if it satisfies this property. So this is what's called the Markov property. Basically what this says is that 
your random variable x at the next time step is equal to j, the probability that that happens, given all of these previous time steps, is the same as the probability of just the present time. So here this is the present time, this is the next time. So what it's basically saying is that you have this memoryless property. What happens in the future, this n plus 1, is independent of the past. It only depends on the present right now, but it does not depend upon your initial, your second value, it does not depend upon any of this past, past properties. Okay, so just a little bit of notation, x n denotes a process. If the process is in state i at time n, then the next time step, say n plus 1, it can either stay in that same state or can transfer to another state. So we're going to think about, um, we're going to introduce um, some transition diagrams in a little bit where you have the probability that if you're in state i at this time step, then you're going to move to another state or you're going to stay the same. So this is just another notation here. This is just the probability measure. Normally this xn is typically suppressed. You just normally have the probability. And here, this is just, since we're talking about discrete time, this is the, the PMF that's associated with the random variable xn. Okay, so we can talk about a one-step transition property. One-step transition property, the way we're going to denote this is the probability that you're going to go from state i to state j. So we're kind of reading this backwards. So the i is second, so state i to state j. This is the notation that's used in Linda Allen's book for this course. Um, sometimes if you look at other, um, other stochastic processes, st um, other lectures, other books, sometimes this is PIJ, you have a different size matrix, so you have to be careful in this. Um, some of the things that we're going to use this to um, define a transition, um, probability transition matrix. And so this notation is really important because it's not the same across different books. So here we're going to say we're going to go from state i, state i here, to state j. And what this is is this, the probability that, and this should be i, so it's the probability that xn equals i, what's the probability that the next state is j given that the previous one is i, so change this one to an i here. Um, so in other words, the, the probability that the process is in state j at the next time step, given it was in state i at the previous time. Okay, so next time we're going to talk about a couple examples of this. Um, so hopefully it will all make more sense next time. This is just an introduction to the terminology in this lecture.